Let's go, PB. Let's go. Little poopy butt. Let me see that butt, 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 butt. Let me see that butt, that fluffy little butt. Well, hey there, everyone. <laughs> It's Anthony back with another video here on Single and Placing. Hi. Hope you're having a fantastic day, weekday, weekend, week, month, evening, morning, overnight, all of that good stuff. Hope you're doing well. We're out here today with another walk and chat, walking and rocking. I was in the mood to film again to get through some more of your responses and comments. So that's what we're gonna do today. Take the boy out for a walk. We've had some, uh, well, I was in the office today. I got home about mm, an hour ago and I got home and decided to organize my jaded gem shop enhancement drill. So I sat down and did that, Apollo 8 and sat next to me for a little while, finished that, and now it was time for a stroll. Um, it is Thursday at the time of filming this, and yeah, so I'm not sure when I will get around to putting this up. I have a vlog that is processing right now, and I'm gonna try to upload that tonight. Then I have another one from yesterday or the day before um, that I need to edit and process. Hopefully get that done tonight as well. Get that scheduled to go up tomorrow, ideally, if time allows. And then this one will hopefully go up on uh, sometime soon. <laughs> Sunday, Monday, something like that. Maybe I can get it, up, get it going on Saturday. We'll see. Just trying to get as much of this stuff. I try to get it caught up with comments, getting life in order before my vacation. I'm in this like finish projects mode or like wrap up things. And one of the things was like, oh, let's get through some comments. So um, yeah, but uh, just quick life update. Work's going good. Uh, went into the office today. We did a, a meeting or I guess a, I don't, event, something. Essentially, we uh, let internal candidates sign up for resume review. So they were able to come into one of the conference rooms and sit down for 15 minutes with me and three other of our talent recruitment staff. And we just reviewed, they brought in their resume and we just reviewed their resumes and talked about career progression, where they'd like to go within the organization and how they might be able to customize their, and update their resumes to to pursue those things. So that was really cool. Um, they did it, I think, three years ago before I started, and only two people showed up um, throughout the entire two hour little, you know, open house, I guess. I'm not sure what you'd call this thing, uh, review. And we had 14 people show up, and we only had 16 slots open. So it was busy. We were talking and talking and talking. So my voice is already a little shot today, but we're gonna try to get through some more comments. So work's going really good. I'm hoping to have some more stuff buttoned up by the time I leave. In a week from today, I'll be in Ohio. Um, and then as far as diamond painting goes, no progress on any of my whips other than muted sound from UMA Art and Diamond Art Club. I diamond painted a little bit last night and so um, I think by the end of tonight, because I'll diamond paint when I get home and finish doing other stuff, um, I'll probably be diamond painting for a little bit. I should be about 75% done with that kit, so I'm going to get it done this weekend, finish uh, getting my script done for my MUCA video, and get that scheduled and ready to rock and roll. My uh, kickoff video for Summer with the Masters will be going up this Saturday, June 1st. That might have already been passed by the time you see this. Um, and so that's already scheduled, ready to go. Um, it's just waiting to go up. That'll go up 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. 
So if you are seeing this after that date, Saturday, June 1st at 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, then go take a look if you're interested in participating in Summer with the Masters because we are officially started. And yeah, I um, got that done. And then for my MUCA uh, video that I'll be doing later in June, first uh, June 9th, my plan was to have, I'm gonna write the script and then just record the audio of me reading the script. And then I was planning on putting time lapse of me kitting up some MUCA kits in the background, but um, I filmed a time lapse of me kitting up Primrose from Alphonse MUCA and Diamond Painting Shop last night. And I was like, okay, I'll kit this up. This should be about a 10, 15 minute uh, clip of me doing the time lapse. I completely forgot how fast time lapses go. So I got that entire kitting up done and went to go look at the video and it was 37 seconds long. And I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. I'd have to kit up like 50 kits to, to make, a, to have enough time to read the script. So um, I'm changing my plans. I'm going to do photos of um, my finished MUCA panels. And then I'm just going to do very slow pans over those as I'm talking. Um, whoops, potty break. Hold on. What did you eat? What did you eat? My God. Must be feeding you, feeding you extra. Um, so I'm going to do really slow pan overs over my finished MUCAs that I have hung up. And the, at, then I'll, those will be panning as I talk. And then I'll also probably include, um, I'll be doing cut-ins of his other artwork and stuff, picture in picture. You'll see when it's all said and done. But I'm hoping to get all of that done this weekend. Get that edited, posted, and scheduled for the 9th. That way I don't have to worry about it. Um, I guess the only thing I would have to worry about is the, the little clip at the end that'll be like, okay, and we're giving away blah, blah, blah for this week. Or these are the prizes for this week and here's how to enter. So I'll have to film that at some point. Um, I'm just waiting on confirmation of what our prizes from our sponsors will be. Um, if I don't get that information in time, I might just say, all right, well, the prize pack for this week will be listed down in the description box. So what you'll need to do is go to the description box of this video look over the prizes so you know what is up for grabs this week and then comment with XYZ. It'll most likely be what you learned about Alphonse Mucha um, from this video. Comment that and then you'll be entered to to win. So I think that's how we're gonna, that, that might have to be how I do it because we may not have hashed out which prizes are going for what date by the time I leave. So I'll have to go in and do that while I'm in Ohio. We'll see, we'll see. I'm just trying to think ahead, but um, yeah. So what else? Um, let's cross. So yeah, I, I've kitted up Primrose by Alphonse Mucha and Distracted by Diamonds. So that's most likely gonna be the first round kit that I start working on for the event. So I'm gonna do that and my cross stitch conversion. And if I happen to finish one of those, most likely Primrose, then I'll kit up another Old Masters, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. There, we may never get to it, but we'll see. And that's Summer with the Masters for me. Um, I don't think I'll be kitting up anything else until something's finished, so. At first I was like, I'll kit up this and I'll kit up this and I'll film it all and use it in a video. But those, those time-lapse clips, I forgot how fast they go and how short they are. And it's just, I'm, I'd rather not. Time-lapses were fun for me for a while there, but it's just a lot. <laughs> um, and like I said, I'd rather be listening to an audio book or something instead of filming while I diamond paint. Um, I'd rather be doing something else, so. Um, it'll be rare when you see me filming while I'm at the crafting table, I think, for a little while. We'll see. But, uh, yeah. So, that's that. I'm trying to think of anything else that I wanted to update you on. Um, I don't think so. 
Um, by the time this goes up, you may have already seen my spotlight premiere with the creativity scroll will most likely have already gone up. Um, that's going to be that same Saturday, the same kickoff as Summer with the Masters. It'll be Saturday night, my time, 7 p.m. So 12 hours after the kickoff video goes live. And then immediately following that at probably 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, you'll get to see an unboxing of um, my new my new creativity squirrel kit from hannah over at iterations crafts that should be up forget the name of that kit already but i filmed it <laughs> um, and there's a chance that i may hit that up sometime in july we'll see we'll see uh, so yeah that's pretty much everything so i guess let's get around the corner here and we'll crack into some comments. I didn't wear my running shoes today. I'm just wearing Vans. So we're going to just be walking because Vans are not the most comfortable walking shoes, let alone fast walking or jogging. We're just going to keep a slow pace, which I think will be fine for Apollo. And if it does start raining, we'll make our way back to the house. I'm wearing, I'm just wearing my work clothes. I didn't change today for this. I felt like keeping it cash. Let him sniff, I don't mind, and take it easy. Da, da, da. Um, what's this about Top Thrill reopening? Hold on. Got an alert about potent that roller coaster that's closed potentially reopening. Let's see. Uh... Oh, cool. Um, one of the guys that I follow. Um, so the issue with that roller coaster, just to let you know, seems to be with the wheels that they used for that roller coaster. Um, it, they were wearing through much faster than the company that they contracted to build, rebuild that roller coaster. The wheels were wearing through much faster than they had anticipated and so they decided to close the ride re-engineer the wheels so that they are longer lasting they're not having to either replace them or worry about them being faulty and so he just posted a short on youtube saying that the uh, contract company which is called zamperla which is a roller coaster manufacturer they are on site at Cedar Point right now, um, installing some new wheels. So there's a chance they may start putting it into testing and who knows, it might be ready by next week in time for us to ride it. That would be amazing. But I don't have my hopes very high because they have to do a lot of testing once they make changes like that. So it could be a while, but who knows? Might be a fun little extra bonus surprise that that, that ride reopens. But anyway, okay. Who just stood the stairs? Apollo, we walk so much. I came downstairs. Now, let me know if you're getting tired of me quote unquote gloating about being more active. It's not, I just think it's, I, I, I like talking about how things are improving in that regard. And hopefully it comes across as me just being happy. Um, Hopefully that's okay. But I came downstairs last night um, while I was diamond painting to refill my big old igloo jug of water. And Joe, my roommate, and his girlfriend Maddie were downstairs. Up, up. And they were like, Anthony. Or Joe was like, you're looking really fit. I haven't mentioned it before, but you're looking really fit. And I was like, oh, thank you. That's what happens when you walk your dog four, six, seven miles a day. <laughs> and go on hikes twice a day or whatever, you know. This is our second walk of the day. And that's what happens. Um, you a little Peabody today? So anyway, okay, enough, Anthony. Let's get to these comments. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. See if it'll load. Okay, comments. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. 
keep those comments scrolling. Where are we going? Where are you taking me? It looks like we're, I mean, I scrolled a lot, but not nearly as much as I normally do. Oh, nope. I don't know what you're rolling in, but that's not good. Don't do that. Um, okay. Going to my episode, uh, vlog, episode 107, Walking Around Bear Creek. Leslie Diamond Paints says, I must admit, I missed your company while you were away, but I'm glad you're living your best life. Thanks for the vlog. Of course. Thank you for watching. And I hope that I'm able to be, like I said, never any promises, but I'm hoping to be, hoping to have some more vlogs for you. I mean, I'm going to have three going up pretty much back to back to back. Um, you know, at the time of filming this, you've already seen two of them. And now here's the third. And then there'll be a little bit of a lull while I uh, prep and travel. And then once I get to Cedar Point, I'll be filming at least two vlogs, if not more. Um, and I'll get e those either up while I'm there or when I get home. So you'll get another batch of those. And then we're going to Waterworld that following weekend. So maybe I'll bring my camera with me for that trip. We'll see. Um, and I was also thinking of, I'm not sure because one ticket to Waterworld is 35 bucks and then the season pass is 80. So I'm like, maybe I'll just get a season pass that way I can come back once or twice more throughout the summer by myself, maybe even on a weekday. Um, and vlog because it is a waterproof camera and I believe if I have my chest strap on they will let me bring my camera on the rides so I could take you on or some of the slides and stuff we'll see I, that is pie in the sky plans but we'll see maybe maybe so you might get some water park vlogs that would be kind of fun um then going into my unboxing of all is vanity by Charles Allen Gilbert and Jaded Gem Shop Michelle Callender, hi Michelle, says I'm loving the image within an image. So cool. Yeah, it is awesome. Thank you for the comment. Uh, my vlog episode 107 again. Partha Narjan said, you don't have to keep buying products to make us excited. You have a right to more than just one interest. I mean, you are not one dimensional. I like your cooking and skincare videos too. Oh, yay. I'm glad you like those. I need to do a cooking video again because I have a much nicer kitchen now <laughs> to do that in. And I could probably set up the camera a little bit easier. Um, and then as far as skincare vlogs, unless I get a specific request for like, oh, teach us about this thing, or I've been curious about this thing within skincare, maybe I would do a clip or a specific video for it. Otherwise we would just chat about it on a vlog, but I'd love to incorporate more skincare. I just, I don't know, for whatever reason, I just felt like they, it should live separately from my quote unquote crafting channel. But this channel is a lot more just life stuff as opposed to specific to diamond painting. I mean, we talk a lot about diamond painting, but I, I don't even know the last time I've put the camera down in front of a kit inside and have actually, you've actually seen me diamond paint. I'm hoping that by the fact that you see me doing finishes, it, it proves that I actually do the thing, but, um, but I'm, I'm less likely to film in front of my crafting table these days. Um, I just, I'd rather be outside. And I, I like having diamond painting being my own time, um, which is kind of why I fell in love with the craft in the first place, but never say ne never. But if there are specific skincare topics you want me to cover, or you wanna see, you know, my stash of products or talk, you know, go through anything more in detail, just let me know and I will make sure to incorporate it some way somehow, because. I can talk for ages about skincare. So thank you for the comment. Going back to my vlog episode 104, L-E-T-6-8, hi Ellie, says, um, hi Anthony and Apollo, thanks for the walk and chat. I'm still not sure about AI art. I love the thought of somebody sitting and using their imagination and time, like all old artwork, I don't know enough to, though to judge. I feel the hobby and kits wherever we, wherever seen has made me aware of a lot of new artists. I used to buy uh, uh, from, I think, Allie and I don't, and I didn't, and I did it innocently 
as I hadn't seen the alternative. I also couldn't afford anything more and wasn't sure if I'd like the hobby as I have been a serial collector of things. I think if somebody can't afford expensive kits, they shouldn't be put, uh, be put off. We like what we like. If I didn't get the cheaper kits, I probably wouldn't have bought more of the expensive kits by the artists. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does, for sure. So, you know, those those um, budget kits that potentially had unlicensed artwork were kind of your entry into now licensed artwork from other shops. That's how I started. My first kit was an unlicensed Amazon kit. And then as I learned about the implications and problems with that, I quickly moved over to um, two license, uh, shops that carry licensed artwork. I've only done one. That first kit was my only unlicensed piece that I ever did. So I totally get it. Um, da, da, da. Um, in a bin you are passing, I would much prefer someone to do that than leave it or dump the bag somewhere else. Oh, talking about dog poop. Yeah, I, I mentioned that in a previous vlog. I don't do that anymore. I just either take the... Um, Take, I take the poop bag with us to either the nearest public trash can or back to the house. And then you will notice on a recent vlog, we went hiking around, I think it's called Colton Trail. Um, Apollo went potty, there wasn't any trash can anywhere nearby. So I just, I knew that that uh, trail was in a loop. So we'd be coming back the way we came. So I kind of hid his poop bag next to this little bridge. And then on our way back to the car, I picked it up and threw it in the trash can that I found back near the car. So that's how we do it. And then also all of the poop bags, not that I would ever leave a poop bag anywhere, but all of Apollo's poop bags are biodegradable and compostable. They use like some sort of corn starch or something to make the bags. So they degrade over time. That's more of a, a landfill thing than it is me just thinking I could leave it anywhere, but figured I'd mention it. <laughs> and then I have a lot, I have lots of makeup. I never took notice of the time I of the time I had it. Luckily, I never had a problem. I can't believe how dark it got on your walk while I was riding. LOL. Thanks again, Ellie. Thank you for watching as always. I love hearing from you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I think that yeah, I think it got like pitch black during that walk. Thanks for the comment. Let me make sure I like and heart. Haha. -ha. Um my vlog episode 107. Uh call in uh, Colin Mishka said, Anthony, your vlogs make me miss Colorado so much. I love watching your content. A uh, double feature, Apollo, crack me up. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime he goes potty twice, that's a double feature. Uh, maybe you won't be single in placing for long. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I think I was talking about going out and about and meeting some new people at that, um, that, that event. And it was a little bit of a dud, but, um, we, I may be going out uh, this weekend before I go to Ohio, there's a couple other things happening around town. And then um, the weekend of my birthday is Pride weekend here in Denver. And so I'll be going to the parade. Maybe I'll vlog that. Um, going to the parade, going out, that type of stuff. So yeah, have my outfit already. Then going to uh, my unboxing of All is Vanity by Char Charles Allen Gilbert. Polly Tobin said, I have liked the picture with the lady in the mirror for a while. I'm looking forward to seeing you do that one. Yay. Yeah, I don't, my plan was to do that for Summer with the Masters. Who knows if that'll actually happen. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to just kit up a bunch of stuff like I was planning. I'm going to take it one uh, new project as, at a time in addition to my cross stitch conversion. And we'll see how far I get. But uh, Primrose, I believe is 62 by 140 or something. So it's another big boy and it's pretty confetti heavy. So I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> and then my vlog episode 107, Mia's life with KFS. Hi Mia. Um, I know you put on my Instagram, at least at the time of filming this, that you missed me. I need to be better about getting on your Sunday live. I think I've missed the past like two or three. Um, I've just been, been life in with life. So, and then, so I might be able to do it this Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday, which would be June 2nd at the time of filming this, of course, this might even go up on that day, who knows? Um, but the ninth, I won't be because I'll be on vacation, 
uh, running around. I might hop on just to text and say hello while I'm at the park, but other than that, I don't think I'll be able to watch. Hop up. Good boy. Good boy. You're being such a good boy today. You were so patient when I got home. Yeah, you just hung out. You didn't push me to leave. Oh, I love this freaking dog. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without him. I'm really nervous about leaving him alone. I know Doug's going to take care of him and it'll be fine, but uh, it just stresses me out leaving him. Leaving him. So I'm going to be asking for constant updates from Doug. It is nice, though, that he'll get to be home. He doesn't have to go to a um, to be boarded. However, uh, in the future, I will most likely take him to this boarding place, this new one that I found. It's called a Dog Dude Ranch, and it's out by the airport. And they have private rooms for all the dogs. They bring their food to them during meal time, like room service. They have acres of fenced in land and like smaller partitions. So if your dog doesn't like to play with other dogs, they have their own like private half acre uh, that's fenced in to run around or they have common uh, dog runs where dogs can run around in groups. And then they also have a pool where the dogs can go swimming and stuff. Um, it's pricey. It's pricey. It costs as much as like uh, a, like a hotel, a budget hotel, but a hotel for people nonetheless. It's expensive, but I think it would be worth it. He would get a chance to socialize, and then if he is not feeling it, he has his own private space and all that stuff. And then they have cameras in all the rooms, so you can check in on them, or you, they even have an option where you can um, text during certain hours and say, send him a treat, and they'll bring in a treat or a toy or something in, into their room. Um, for for the Peppo from their owner. So it's very upscale uh, dude ranch resort for dogs. <coughs> so I'll most likely be taking Apollo there next time I go on a trip, which uh, might be in the fall. So anyway, um, Mia. Mia says, my sweet Anthony, I want to know all about that event. Tell me, please. I did I did in an, uh, a vlog already, so hopefully you got to see that. Oh, and I can't wait to see photos from Cedar Point, too. That's coming up in a couple weeks. Oh, well, it's a week from today for me, but as far as what you'll see, uh, maybe I'll post some stuff to my community tab. Oh, look at this cat. Look at the kitty. She doesn't, well, I don't know if they're friendly. She's like, no, no, thank you. Not interested. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You don't need the cat. You don't need the cat. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Apollo. There you go. Focus up. Let's go. You can't just traipse through everyone's gardens. Come on. Good boy. Um, yeah, maybe I'll post a couple of photos to the community tab. I don't know. I say all this stuff and then I might get there and it'll just be a whirlwind. I'm not even thinking about content. So, and that tends to happen with me when I'm doing events and stuff. The last thing I think about is like, ooh, this will be good for content. I'm not one of those. I, I, I'm just not that type of vlogger. I'll set aside specific time to film in the evenings or on Sunday, the last day I'm there. But while I'm in the thick of it, I'm just, I'm just there in the moment, so we'll see. Uh, I know you live life to the fullest when you are not posting videos, but I still miss you in Apollo when it's been too long. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'll try. I'll try harder and I'll try to be more consistent, but absolutely no promises. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you for the comment. I appreciate it, Mia. It's always good to hear from you. And then going to my event announcement for Summer with the Masters. Tabitha Najili, Nej, I hope I got that right, says this will be my first year participating, so looking forward to this. I ordered um, the piece I plan to do, eagerly awaiting for its arrival. Oh yay, you'll have to let me know what you're working on, um, and I'll try to look out for it on the uh, Google Doc. Thank you. Then back to my unboxing of All is Vanity. Alley Cat, hi, says, I love this image. Just think it's an interesting subject due to the time period it was created. Yeah, it's really cool. Thank you for the comment. 
Then we've got a few from my vlog episode 108, talking skincare and arguing with Apollo. I remember that one. Um, Kay Whittington says, Hi, Anthony. I wanted to let you know I've gotten a jump start on my summer with the Masters. Yeah, nice. I'm working on a landscape, A Gust of Wind by Corbet. I think it's going to be beautiful, soft colors, blues and greens. It is a large 105 by 120, so it'll probably take four to five months for me to complete. Being the pokey placer that I am, I don't post to social media, so I won't be uploading progress pictures uh, to social media. Um, so yeah, uh, but I wanted you to know I'm participating unofficially. Also, I have a kit from Jade that I would be willing to donate as a prize. I ordered it twice. The first time I ordered the wrong size, so I bought a second one. It would be, I would be happy to donate the smaller one if you're interested. It's the library 40 by 70. Let me run it by Katie. I think we're kind of holding hard and fast to the gift card aspect of it all, um, just so people aren't having to worry about shipping or international shipping and all of that stuff. But I really do appreciate it. We just kind of wanted to keep everything electronically just to streamline, make it easy not only for us, but give it, give more people across the globe the opportunity to obtain and win a prize that they can utilize or won't have to shell out a bunch of extra money and do hey, custom. Sorry about that, ran out of battery. But Kay, I will run that by Katie. I, I don't think we'll be utilize, we'll be doing anything that needs to be shipped or anything like that, but we, I really do appreciate it. And if there comes an opportunity in a future event or something where we would, we could use something along those lines, I will reach out to you. So I'm not trying to sound um, ungrateful. I think that is amazing and I really appreciate it, but we kind of had a specific way of doing this in mind to, uh, to mitigate shipping or dealing with physical things ourselves. Um, and I kind of think, at least personally, I'd like to stick with that. Um, Katie might feel differently. Um, and if so, I will let you know. I have your email address, so um, I'll ask her. Well, thank you so much. That's very sweet. Look at all these poppies. So many flowers blooming. I love how delicate they look and beautiful. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, da, da, da. big, big comment from Ellie. So bear with me while I read through this. Um, Hi, Anthony and Apollo. Thanks for the walk and talk. The area you live is beautiful. I'm sat on the sofa with three pups on me as we are having a thunderstorm. Oh, pre-2019, I would be sitting in a dark place with cotton wool in my ears and a mask over my eyes. Oh my gosh, it was that bad and my nieces would call me to make sure I was okay. So now I'm a mummy of three um, scaredy pups and two cats who are uh, mad. One insisted on going out, the other is on the windowsill watching it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I might be into sourcing and Alphonse. I hope I spelt that right. Canvas, if you're going to do an event, I look forward to your video with his story. You made me laugh about the people in your neighborhood. Um, if I told you about the goings on in our avenue, you would not believe it. Listen, if you go to the meetings and the bars, you may make friends and those friends may have that friend that could be your person. Get out there, have fun, meet people who know others. It's great that your stepdad has been visiting and you managed to spend some family time with your gang. I hope your mom is doing well and send her a happy Mother's Day from me. Uh, yeah, I will. I, it's past that time. My, my apologies. But yes, I will text her. Um, she does watch these videos too from time to time, so she may hear it. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day from Ellie. It's great. Oh, um, skincare. I will listen to, hon. I'm not a good skincare person. Terrible is the word really. My skin is clean with warm water and baby wipes in between. I will go for now. Thank you, Ellie. Yeah, no problem. I, yeah, I, when I cover, when I talk about those other interests, I'm hoping I'm not like uh, sounding like I'm trying to push the skincare agenda on people. It's just something that I am, I love doing and I'm passionate about and fairly knowledgeable about and it's another hobby. So uh, just take it as just other things to listen to me ramble on about, but you know, maybe someday you'll take, you know, you might hear some information that's good to share or, you know, who knows, but thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. Um, as far as the MUCA goes, yeah, the MUCA Mania event most likely won't be until, well, I know it won't be till at least late 2024, if not early 2025. So don't worry about it quite yet. If you stumble upon an Amuka kit that you would do regardless, event or no, that you want to pick up, then of course snag it and I will 
have more information about that after a question of reality paint along slash event. So in November was most likely we'll, where I'll start, you know, talking about specific timelines and stuff. But it's just an idea I wanted to put out there um, and let people know it's something I'm thinking about. Um, so either just, uh, uh, well, at the end of the day, it's either going to be December, January or January, February is probably what it would be. But don't hold me to that just yet. <laughs> so... Thank you so much for the comment. And then Miller Time Mama said, I really enjoyed the skincare tips. Thank you. Of course, of course. Yeah, I, I love talking about that. And when we covered that, I just covered the most bare bones basic. Like if you don't do anything skincare wise, then I would start by washing my face and then putting sunscreen on and then washing the sunscreen off and then, on, and then repeat. If you want to put something on hydrating in the evening, then find yourself a nice evening moisturizer, depending on your skin type and condition and concerns. And then, you know, wash, moisturize at night. In the morning, wash that off, put your sunscreen on. And so really max like three products total, because that cleanser should be able to be used morning and night. It, I have a skincare routine that can get as as hefty as like a dozen steps. So there's way more that I do, but I don't expect everyone to be anywhere near that. So um, yeah, thank you. Then we've got a few comments in regards to my finish and review of Gizmonda. Uh, J Pat says, it looks fantastic. I love the color palette. So much of that must have been so fun to work on. Yeah, it was amazing. I thought the image was great before I knew something was missing, and I still do. The finished product is undeniably impressive. Doing the title separately is a good option. I was bummed when I saw that the uncropped version of Sultana is actually a slight crop of the original. Yeah, I think there was, uh, there was just, that, that's such a massive, a big image with a lot of detail. So to get it all in would have been, I think, I, I mean, it's Jade's call. It's her shop, but might have been even too big for her manufacturers produ to produce or too big, oh, uh, you know, not reasonable. I'm not sure what the, you know, she makes her own decisions based on the renderings that she sees. But yeah, I think it is a slight crop. Um, I really prefer the fill image. I don't think there's a chance I can just tack on the missing margins, but I have to admit that the image looks okay as it is too. I liked it enough to order it after all, so I fill you. One silver lining is that I can work... Um, I can work at my stash all the quicker. Nice finish and commemoration of the event. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was a blast to work on. I love Gizmonda. It's hanging in our um, dining room now. If editing Anthony put a picture in of it, because I took a picture of it with like the lamp and stuff, and it's very dramatic looking. Um, so yeah, I wonder if, if you run into that again, what I would suggest for Jade, uh, for if you're purchasing from Jade, if you run into that again, where you see a old masters or something that she's put up on her shop and it's a crop or something like that, and you'd prefer it to be different, tell her before you go and buy it. Um, do the contact us page, reach out to her on Instagram and just say, Hey Jade, I noticed that, you know, Sultana or whatever it is, is slightly cropped from the original. Is there any way I can get a custom of the, of the original image and could you send me some sizes and pricing because I'm more than likely she will say yes even if it's you know absurdly large she'll still give you the option as long as her manufacturer can fit it on their printer she'll try to get it done for instance um, I have the Garden of Earthly Delights and that kit is the large one of the largest kits that she has in her shop um, that can fit on the printer width wise. And so it doesn't hurt to ask. It doesn't hurt to ask if you're seeing something and maybe you didn't realize prior to purchasing it. But now that you know, I'd say going forward, if there's a kit that you see or an old masters on her site, just type it in Google to see if there's more to it than what she has. And if there is, then ask her if there's the opportunity to get it done as a custom because the pricing shouldn't be too far off, you know. Um, so yeah, thank you for the comment. Um, Marsha says, wow, great job. Sadly, I would redo it with the title at the top. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I go back and forth. Now that I see it hung up and displayed 
and heard my roommates and friends comment on how amazing it looks, I'm less concerned because it still looks just as stunning. So, and it'll be the same size as all the other ones I'll do eventually. It just won't have the title at the top. So I might just do all the other ones over the course of however many years. And when they're all done, let's say in five years, they're all done in six years. And I go back to that original one and I feel some kind of way about it. Then I will think about redoing it, but I'm not going to buy it again right now. Um, it just doesn't make sense. So, but I, I go back and forth on my feelings towards it. Right now I'm feeling positively towards it. So yeah, thank you. Mia's Life with KFS says, she is beautiful, Anthony. Oh, thank you. And then Sarah B Crafts, or is it Sarah B Crafts? It says, beautiful. I would be tempted to redo it with the title at the top so that it matches the others. Yeah, I might, but right now it'll be the same size as all the others, just without the title. So, eh, I don't know. Like I said, right now I'm feeling positively about it now that it's hung and people are ooing and aahing over it. Um, Lisa says, hey, Anthony, we all go through ebbs and flows and are on, if you're on a break, that's fine. It's what you must need right now. Beautiful video. I find the skincare very interesting. I'm from an, an era of just Noxzema. Any tips for a person little over 50 skincare? Thank you for your company. Yeah, for sure. That's from my vlog talking skincare. So Lisa, um, I would need to know a little bit more about your skin type and condition. Like, are you more dry, oily? You know, do you still, do you deal with any sort of uh, blemishes or breakouts, hyperpigmentation, meaning like dark spots from sun exposure or anything like that, or melasma or anything? That'll help to kind of refined, refine a suggested routine beyond just the basics of washing your face and putting sunscreen on because that's that's where I would recommend everyone start um, but I guess for me personally as I'm getting closer to 50 I'm 12 years away and I'm uh, 12 years and a month away from from 50 um, I would say what I am personally starting to think about is retaining my um, collagen so retaining the kind of plumpness and firmness in my skin, because as we age, our collagen production lessens, we start to see kind of sagging, you know, gravity takes its toll. We start to see more fine lines and wrinkles because we're losing that volume, that physical volume out of our, our face. Um, so hydration and collagen production and skin turnover are kind of the most important things for me as I get into my 40s. So my plan of attack is maintaining a high level of hydration in my skin, even though I have oily skin, it can still be dry and oily um, because they're, they're different things. Um, so that includes lifestyle adjustments, meaning making sure that I'm drinking plenty of water. I try to go for a gallon a day if I can. Um, I'm getting closer and closer to hitting that. Um, a gallon a day if I can. Um, I don't really have any diet changes that I'm actively doing, but I'd like to start reducing the amount of sodium I consume because um, that can help over time. Hold on just a second. Um, so yeah, those are kind of some lifestyle changes, getting good sleep, exercising when you can, um, and try to develop a good routine. Oh, look at him on his island. His little puppy island. You ready? Let's go. Um, but as far as skin care goes, topical treatments for aging, um, I want to avoid getting or developing fine lines in like crow's feet. I don't have them now, but I'm a very expressive person with my face, so that's probably something I will be dealing with. Oh my gosh. The path even from yesterday is more flooded. This is going to be closed probably in the next week or so. We'll have to go up and over the bridge instead of under. Oh, I didn't bring my hiking shoes, just my vans. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. Ugh, ugh. It's flooding. Um, so for that, um, you can look at various eye creams 
There's some that are a little bit more rich and more emollient, meaning they have more like oils like jojoba, squalane, um, sunflower seed oil, that type of thing. Um, I typically go for something that has maybe some squalane because that's a plant-based oil-like substance that our skin produces, but they plants produce it as well. It'll provide some hydration. And I usually like to look for something with a little bit of caffeine because caffeine can temporarily, it's a vasoconstrictor, so it constricts veins. Um, so it'll temporarily reduce the look of dark circles, bagginess, that type of thing. It's cosmetic and only lasts as long as you're using it. It's not per a permanent fix. Um, so that's what I would look for. For me personally is something that's got a little squalane maybe and some caffeine for temporary um, kind of short-term look of more awakeness and firmer, you know, less saggy eye area. Um, there's one from The Ordinary. The brand is called The Ordinary and it's their caffeine eye serum or solution. Um, you can get that at Ulta for like less than 10 bucks. I think it's like six, seven, eight, nine dollars and it lasts you ages. It comes in 30 milliliters and that'll last you a year, two years. <laughs> so um, you have that. For everything else, um, I like to do a hydrating toner, which means a thin watery fluid that I pat into my skin after I've cleansed my skin and just let my skin soak up as much of that as it will. Um, so I just do a few drops of it, a splash of it in my hands, pat, 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 pat. Another layer, pat, 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 pat. A little bit more, pat, pat. I go all the way until my skin is damp, moist with the toner. Um, when I look for toners, those hydrating fluids, um, I don't do anything astringent or exfoliating or really anything like that, typically, typically, unless you can find one that does that plus other things. But for the purposes of this video, I'll say I just do something very hydrating. So I look for something with a, light, a lot of hyaluronic acid. Um, hyaluronic acid holds moisture to the skin um, and prevents uh, trans epidermal water loss, which means essentially the moisture from your skin is evaporated out through the environment, especially if you live in dry climates like we do here in Colorado. So I do a hydrating toner. Um, there's a myriad of different ones. So I don't know exactly which one I would suggest for you. You'd have to let me know if you have any other concerns because you can kind of customize that. Um, but yeah, just a hydrating toner. Look for ingredients like glycerin, hyaluronic acid, that type of thing. Um, and a lot of toners will also include an ingredient called niacinamide, which is vitamin B, B3 or B5. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's B3. Um, and niacinamide is uh, known for its brightening properties. It can help reduce redness and inflammation. So it's a good just kind of, um, it keeps the status quo. It keeps things looking not red, not irritated, but also it'll help brighten the skin. So you have more of a, gl a glowy kind of youthful dew or look to your skin. Um, so you can find a toner that has hyaluronic acid, a little glycerin, some niacinamide. Um, that would be probably my next thing I'd throw in there. So an eye cream and a hydrating toner. So those would probably be my two things that I would add in addition to my sunscreen and my cleanser. So now you're looking at a um, and a moisturizer at night. So now you're looking at five products that you're using throughout the day and night. So that's kind of where I'd go with that. Once again, if there's more specific things that you're looking for, like, oh, I've got these, you know, sunspots and dark spots, or, you know, um, I'm, I've got re super dry skin. So I want, you know, I need something specific for that. Then let me know and I can try to help you out further, but that's just kind of broad strokes, um, skincare routine for someone that's looking to, um, not necessarily churn back the hands of time, but keep things happy and healthy as you age. Um, but yeah. 
Um, like I said, sunscreen, start there. Don't, don't listen to this and say, I'll do all of the things Anthony just said, but no sunscreen. It's a waste of time <laughs> to do all the other stuff. Start with the sunscreen, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right, moving on. <laughs> okay. I was trying to think of another like comparison to doing all this stuff and then not wearing sunscreen. And immediately my head went to a dark place. It's like uh, wearing, wearing all sorts of like protective gear when you're going mount like mountain biking or skiing. You wear your you wear your helmet or you wear protective gear to protect your limbs um, for when you do the activity and then you go home and hit your leg with a hammer. <laughs> that's that's my, my, my comparison to doing other steps but not wearing sunscreen. It's like, what's the point if you're just gonna let the UV damage take hold? Hop up, come on. Hi, Angel. Yeah, you're doing good, let's go. Okay, all righty. Um, we've got a few comments in regards back to my finish and review of Gizmunda. Lisa says, wow, Anthony turned out beautiful. I'd probably redo, redo it so they'd be all the same size, but I'm sure whatever you choose will look wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Like I said, I'm feeling good about the situation. You want to come down here and see the big old rapids? I'm feeling good about how it looks right now, now that it's all hung up and looking beautiful. Um, and my mind's kind of moved away from that project, but we'll see. We'll see. Should have worn my hiking shoes. Eh. 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 This way. So yeah, these rapids are just too wild right now to be tubing. You'd flip over immediately right there. What do you think, big boy? A little too much for you? That's okay. We'll find a more comfortable spot for you to wade. This way. Oop, oop. These vans are slippery. Come on. Okay. But thank you so much for the comment. Um, Betsy McCloyd said, I would not redo it. It would just be the premier piece in a collection. Oh, that's a good way to think about it. Yeah, maybe I'll just take that mindset. <laughs> and then... Diamonds are a girl's best friend, said I'm so impressed at how quickly you're able to do that size of a painting. It turned out amazing. And I love how much you know about the artist. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, that kit didn't feel as big as it was. It was round, so rounds for me tend to go faster because I'm not worried as much about gapping and I can typically multi-place better, or not better, but my sloppy multi-placing isn't as apparent when I'm doing round drills and the materials from Jade to Gem Shop are fantastic so I'm spending less time fussing with like trash drills or symbols I can't read or you know stuff like that. I didn't have to worry about any of that and yeah that's really all I can say. I mean I didn't spend exorbitantly more amount of time you know, working hours on it than I would any other kit. It just went quickly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I feel like people say, I, I never know how to take, I'm sure it not, doesn't come from like a, a judgy place, but anytime I hear like, I have no idea how you get kits like that done. I, you can already hear in the tone that I'm using for this impression that I take it the wrong way. So excuse me, but um, <laughs> I don't know how you're, able to get kits done that fast. Do you not work? Do you not sleep? You know, yada, yada, yada. I typically don't respond to those comments. I mostly see them on like Facebook when I post on like a Facebook group or on Instagram. I don't respond to those comments because I'm like, you know, if you've, you follow me on my social media, that I work a full-time job, 40 hours a week, sometimes 40 plus more often than not if I've got extra stuff, for instance, I'm doing this event this Saturday um, that I have to attend. And you see me go on these walks, you know, like we go on hours long walks to make sure that my boy is taken care of and stuff. So you see the fact that I'm physically doing other things other than diamond painting. So it's like, why is it necessary? I'm, I'm assuming it's in jest 
and it's not meant to be taken any kind of way, but I just, for whatever reason, I don't like when people comment that kind of stuff, no matter if they're being cute or not. It's like, I don't know, the implications there to me feel like, are you skirting a, your life or other parts of your life or skirting your responsibilities in favor of diamond painting more is kind of sometimes how I take it. Um, I'm just a sensitive Sally and the answer is no, <laughs> I don't. It, I just worked on it until it was done. I, I literally have nothing else to say about it. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that, that you, um, Diamond, uh, Diamonds are a girl's best friend were men meaning it in any kind of way. It just reminded me of like some of those comments that I do hear or see. But yeah, uh, good quality products, round drill canvas, fair, fair amount of color blocking and just being in love with what I was working on. I wasn't taking any breaks. Oh, that's probably another reason is I'm almost always working on multiple kits at one time. I'll do a section of this, put it down, go to a section of that, take a couple days off, grab a section of this. So it's, you know, my time is spread out. So my finishes are more spread out. But this kit, I did nothing else but work on it. It was my only whip that I was pushing through on. Um, and so that's another reason why it probably got done so fast. So yeah. All right, come here, easy, good boy. Um, Locked in diamond painting says, I have Gizmonda in square in the largest size as well. It'd be fun to see a difference. Such a beautiful piece, one of my favorite artists, hands down, stunning. Oh, thank you. And you'll have to share more about your, how things are going with the square. I'll, I'd love to hear more. Von Kaiser says, no regrets. Order the topper, and if she remakes it and you think it, you'll be happier with that result, get that too. You clearly like this one well enough. Yes, I do. Yeah, we'll see. I think I'm going to hold on to it for the foreseeable future. Maybe when I'm done with all the other ones, I'll circle back around. We'll see. And uh, Michelle says, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, going to my vlog, episode 107. Teresa Reynolds says, Anthony, do as Lizette from Lizette Crafts and Tell says, shop your own stash. Yeah, I, I have been. I certainly have been. I got two kits in the past, I don't know, while. <laughs> I can't tell you when the last time I did an order from uh, Diamond Art Club was. I guess I could. Let me... Open the app. Uh, where is it now? There it is. Hopefully it doesn't make me log in. Account. My orders. It's probably going to be a lot more recent than I assume. Uh, April 6th was the last time I placed an order. And that was for... Respire was the last kit that I purchased from You May Art in April, April 6th. So it's been uh, almost two months. It's been seven weeks since I purchased something from Diamond Art Club, which is a good stretch for me, for sure. <laughs> a good stretch for me, and I have no intentions on purchasing from them right now. And I don't say that as though like, ooh, I don't like Diamond Art Club. That is not the case. They're the, uh, of my top two favorite shops <laughs> to buy from and probably where I'll continue to buy from. I just need to be realistic with what I have, be happy with what I have, because I think having a stash is fine, but I think everybody has a cap. You know, we, it, I, I don't think it's reasonable for me to just buy infinitely, regardless of my life and time and stuff. So I like having a stash, and if people decide to build a stash and collect kits, that's, a, that's good, <laughs> in my opinion. If you can do it, and you want to do it, then that's fine. And it's what I have done. Um, but I'm slowing down, and I'm going to work on what I currently have, see where that leaves me, and then we'll go from there. So yeah, I am definitely shopping my own stash for sure. Um, I got my creativity squirrel kit 
which I love. Um, hopefully you've seen that unboxing by the time this goes up. If not, it should be coming up soon. And then I got Medi from Jaded Gem Shop to potentially work on for Summer with the Masters, but I don't know if that'll end up happening. Depends on how quickly Primrose gets worked up. So yeah. Okay, it looks like we've got a few more for my finish and review of Gizmonda. Lisa Noof says, well, Anthony, you sure did that one fast for such a large canvas. Looks beautiful. Regarding what to do about adding her name at the top, that is a hard decision. I haven't seen a painting that had another piece stitched to it, but my fear would be that the weight of the drills may cause it to sag and show where it's attached. Yes, you are right. I did not think about that. Um, however, I've never tried it, so it, it uh, so I may be off base with that. Good luck with your decision. Yeah, I think if I was, if I'm going to do anything to it, it probably will be to redo it at some point. But for now, I'm happy with how it looks on the wall. And once again, I probably already did it. Um, insert a picture in picture of what it looks like all hung up in the dining room. Chris Greek says, I just ordered this painting in that size, but in squares. My sister owns a physical theater school and has bad wall space that is longing for this panel or this piece. There is a second Sarah Bernhardt on the, on the Jaded Gem Shop site, but that one has not been updated yet. Um, it's too bad that I didn't know about that topper before I ordered, but regardless, my sister will go ape when she sees it completed. Yeah, it's gonna look beautiful without the, without the title. I know it hasn't been updated yet. Um, I think it's Jade, something Jade is looking at, but she's at the retreat right now. Um, so she won't, I don't think she's going to be fussing with the site too much while she's out of the state and away from her shop. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see though. I need to connect with her. If I do the Mooka Mania event, I'll probably ask if she's willing to re-release re it or put it up as an alternate. We'll see. We'll see. And then Ellie says, hi Anthony. Wow, I can't understand you wanting... I can understand you wanting the top panel now. The only thing I'm not sure about is her face. Not enough detail. I keep trying to see it in your vlog, but it sure is long. It's a biggie for sure, Ellie. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I read your comment when it came through originally, and I took another look at it, and then I took a look at the original image, and I'm like, oh, it looks fine to me. It's not a super detailed face in the original image as far as, like, a lot of like outlining for like cheekbones and stuff. It's pretty smoothed and just kind of a pretty rudimentary kind of like outline of the face. So I, I think it's all there. Um, and of course, even in that finish and review that I filmed, oh, hold on. Um, even in that finish and review that I filmed, the camera was still probably like four feet away or so, and you really do need to take a further step back than even that to have it all kind of come together because it's so big. I mean, these were intended as um, posters that you'd be seeing from like across the street or on a building or something. Um, so that's kind of the perspective they should be looked at is from like tens of feet away as opposed to like right up in them. Um, but yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice any lack of facial detail as compared to the original, at least not anything that was like glaring to me. So you'll have to let me know if there's something specific you're seeing that I'm not seeing. Um, but in person, it looks, it looks fantastic. Thank you so much for the comment. Then going to my event announcement for Summer with the Masters, Chris Orweiler says, I'm thinking of doing this. I wonder how hard it's going to be. Um, doing, I'm not sure if you mean the event itself or like a specific kit that I mentioned within the event, but you can pick an old masters that is, you know, more straightforward. If you want to find an older, um, abstract art piece that only has a few colors or is more blocky, Composition Monumental comes to mind, um, from August Erbin. Come on, come on. I'm not sure what's over there, but you don't need it. From August Erbin, that's a more abstractionist piece that's just kind of like block colors and that worked up really fast. I have that in round. I've already done it in square. It's hanging up at the office and I was like, maybe I'll do it again at some point um, because Robin over at Distracted by Diamond sent me a round version. Um, but that would, that would work up really fast. Um, also, if you really wanted to keep things simple, um, come on, 
let's keep moving. Um, and just wanted to participate with like the smallest thing you could get. The master's set of mini diamond paintings from Paint Gem you can do for the event. And those are teensy little kind of like postage stamp sized snack kits. Hi. Yeah. Um, of which I think it comes with like six or eight of them of different old masters. And they're just really small, kind of really, really small versions of those. And you could do those for, for the event as well if it was more of a participation thing than wanting to work like on a big kit. But yeah, and if it comes to the kits that I selected and you're commenting on, I have no idea how I'd be able to do any of those. Those aren't the only kits that you have at your disposal. It's any kit that was produced um, on or before the year 1928. So just check the year and go from there. Thank you for the comment. Going to my vlog episode 109, uh, 108 again, give vet. Sutton says, hi, Anthony and Apollo. I've just recently found your channel and love it. Oh, yay, I'm glad you like it. I appreciate that. I'm glad you're here and hopefully you continue to enjoy the content. I could listen to your voice all day long, so relaxing and calming. I'm just on a binge watch of your channel and can't wait for your videos in the future. Just to say I'm from the UK. Oh, nice. Take care and thank you for your content. Of course, that's why I'm here is um, to, uh, you know, keep people company and and hopefully you enjoy it. You find it entertaining and fun or relaxing or um, just background noise, whatever it is for you. Um, yeah, and I love hearing comments. So don't for, you know, make sure to keep commenting and engaging if, you, if you'd like. I, I always encourage that and um, share with friends and family that might be interested too. Thank you. All right, let's get past this group and we'll keep yapping. All right. Going to my unboxing of the Tree, in La Tree of Life from Gustav Klimt and Jaded Gem Shop. Uh, Diamond Girl says, beautiful, thank you. And then episode, my vlog episode 108, Mia from Mia's Life with KFS says, Hi Anthony and Apollo, thank you for the vlog. I missed seeing you guys walk about golden. Apollo, please be good. A good boy and do as your daddy tells you. Oh, I would have to look into getting a new Mooka, and then I would love to learn more about Alphonse Mooka and his life. Um, yeah, so skincare. I have heard from so many experts that there is no such thing as anti-aging creams and such, but again, I have never done much skincare at all. I do use sunscreen, though. Sun, sure, I can forget it if I go grocery shopping, but if I am outside for a bigger period, I will use it. And since I'm about to turn 45, I might have to start thinking about doing something for my skin. Hope to chat soon. Until then, take care. Give Apollo a nose boot from me and hugs for you, Anthony. Well, thank you so much, and I will. He's going to get... Um, a, a T-R-E-A-T when we get home. I just thawed some extra special raw food for him, so he'll get that today in his bowl. Um, so yeah, when it comes to uh, anti-aging, I think that's just, it is kind of a misnomer because there really isn't anything that's gonna like reverse the hands of time unless you're talking about like cosmetic procedures and things that are more invasive, you know, that will permanently tighten skin or, you know, that type of thing. When it comes to topical ingredients, it's more about keeping skin healthy and keeping it at the state it's at to try to kind of hold, hold position, you know, <laughs> um, is kind of where it comes from. So I see people use terms now where they say well aging or healthy aging or conscious aging as opposed to anti-aging because we're all going to age, you know, <laughs> time, time, <laughs> time waits for no one and your skin will continue to age no matter what. It's just in what condition, at what speed, you know, what things happen as you age and what you can kind of try to mitigate. So that's kind of how I see it. And the, when, so the term anti-aging I think is a little sloppy and it's just old school marketing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the ingredients in said creams or formulations um, aren't beneficial. It's just, you need to be realistic and practical with what that actually means and what it will actually do. Um, I think people, you know, think anti-aging and they're like, perfect, I'll buy this. And it's literally turning back the hands of time. <laughs> it's not, it's not really how that works. 
Um, so yeah, it's just more of a marketing term, but it doesn't necessarily mean those products are, um, are wholesale ineffective. You just need to tamper uh, your expectations with what they will really do. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I, how I view it. We're gonna go up this creek a little bit more. We never go this far up, and I can show you a little bit more of the creek. There's a little splash area for Apollo if it's not too busy over there. Um, so yeah, um, the other thing is there are a lot of ingredients that are pointed to, well, just one in particular, that's pointed at as an anti-aging ingredient, and that's collagen. Remember I mentioned earlier that a lot of what you're trying to do is um, maintain healthy collagen levels in the skin, prevent collagen degradation, and so a lot of marketing goes around just physically putting the ingredient collagen, be it a plant-based or animal-based collagen, right onto your old skin there. Um, that's not how collagen is formed. Um, you can't just put it on and then your skin takes that in and is like, perfect, I'll use this instead. It has to make its own. <laughs> Um, you can't really topically put it on and increase collagen levels or production with topical collagen. However, it is a very good hydrating ingredient and it helps to moisturize the skin and hold hydration to the skin. So it can give a temporary and, um, and um, cosmetic look of firmer, plumper skin because it's just filling up your skin with hydration and, and helping to hold it there. So you can put that stuff all over your skin and it's like, oh, my skin feels all nice and plump and bouncy. That is not permanent. <laughs> That's as long as you, as long as you're using that product. But once you stop using it, it's not like all that collagen stays or your skin churns it into its own. It's just like a hydrating ingredient. So there's plenty of ingredients like that that get thrown around in the skincare world that claim to be plumping or firming or increasing collagen production, and it's just not really that true, or there's not enough studies around it. One of them is EGF, which is epidural growth factors, and then there is human, human something, oh my gosh, it's like some sort of growth factor or like some kind of conditioned media that is supposed to help it's supposed to encourage your skin to start producing more collagen. That's, there's not a lot of studies behind that. The only, the, one of the main ingredients that can actually um, tell your skin um, to do that, hold on, hi. Um, and they call these cell communicating ingredients is retinol. Retinol is shown in studies and proven to encourage uh, your skin to start producing more collagen and um, produce, um, encouraging skin cell turnover. So retinol is really one of the main well-studied, you know, decades of studies ingredient that can actually do that. So I'd say beyond the stuff that we mentioned before for folks that are aging and trying to well age, retinol is another core ingredient in a routine that I would suggest. But I, that is a whole topic for another day because there's different forms of retinol, there's different concentrations of retinol, there's so many things to consider when you're going to work retinol into your routine. So I don't suggest you just going out and buying the first thing that you see that has retinol on the box because you need to be conscious of concentrations, you need to be conscious that there's Retin, retinol, retinol. Um, there's plant-based versions that, peop, that companies claim is like retinol, but it hasn't been as well studied. Like bakuchiol is one of those ingredients. So um, you have to be careful with retinol. Um, so I personally would not provide any immediate suggestions, just blanket statement. I need to learn a little bit more about you and your skin, and if you've done, used certain products before, how your skin tolerates um, exfoliating, and like that type of thing. So that's not something I can just, um, just across the board say, do this, this is the perfect retinol. Uh, my skin has been 
put through so many different processes and ingredients and stuff. And so at this point, I do use a pretty high strength retinol. And I'd say it's one of the most important things um, that I use aside from sunscreen to um, help my skin stay looking firm and plump because once again, retinol is a cell communicating ingredient that helps encourage your skin cells to uh, turn over faster, produce more collagen. It actually gets in there and kind of starts to change the physicality of how your skin um, goes through its life cycle. And that's pretty rare in skincare. <laughs> what? 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 Oh my word. Hey, 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 hey. Apollo, what are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. That was out of nowhere. <laughs> Jeez Louise. This little boy, I tell you, water gets him, gets him fired up. <laughs> the excitement of water. He's like an avatar. <laughs> Come here. Go on, get in there. Go on. This is why I'd love to live near a lake or near a body of water, because I could just let him off leash somewhere where it's allowed and just let him just go wild. Go on. <laughs> this boy. This boy. <laughs> Okay, okay. Calm down. Calm down. Oh my word. What? You're crazy, huh? Let's go. This was the this was the little splash pad I was talking about. Um I've come over here and had lunch a bunch of times. Just sit here somewhere and just put a picnic blanket down and have some lunch. It's very pretty and relaxing. What? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let you do it so you get this energy out. Cause your dad needs to do some Alphonse Mucha research in diamond paint tonight. And I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. Come here. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Be careful, careful now. Come on, come on, watch your leg, watch your leg, hold on. Come here, let me see your leg. Thank you. Oh, there we go, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, let's see if he'll do some scrambles over here. This is a good spot for some scrambles. Come here. Ugh. Get over here, get over here, get over here. Go, 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 <laughs> go, go, go. We need to get you to the off leash park. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> oh, oh, easy. Let me see the leg. Let me see your leg. Leg, thank you. Okay, you're getting my khakis all wet. You're getting my khakis all wet. Oh my word, this dog. Okay, let's see. Just wanna make sure we're, we're running low on this battery. We'll keep talking until it dies though, cause I've only got one left. So maybe we should head back to the house. Oh, you got my khakis all wet. How was that bud? Was that worth it? So yeah, maybe we should start coming all the way up here so he has a nice flat area to splash. But unfortunately I can't let him off the leash, but we'll see. Maybe I can get him to the reservoir, the lake in Longmont this weekend before I go on my trip and really just let him loose because I want to see if he'll swim. So anyway, sorry, taking up your time. Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep those comments scrolling. Scrolling, 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 right. Here we go. All right, we've got a few comments in regards to my unboxing of the Tree of Life. What do you sniff? What are you sniffing? 
Mia's Life with KFS says, it is beautiful, but oh so big. Yeah, that's a big kit. <laughs> Don't know when that'll happen. I was planning on enhancing it, but I might just do it straight up. I haven't decided yet. We'll see. Uh, Jan Smith said, this, this is absolutely beautiful, Anthony. I can't wait to see it completed. A real work of art. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited too. Michelle Callender says, gorgeous work of art. Can't wait for it to be finished. And um, Kelly Queen says, this painting just begs for its story to be told. I can't wait to do some research into that one. Um, Lisa says, very nice. I love hearing your excitement for this work of art. Side note, I am sorry they closed Top Thrill 2. I know my daughters were looking forward to writing that one this year. My oldest daughter is like you and loves roller coasters. Oh, no, I'm sorry that they were bummed out. Um, you know, I, I, I'm fine with it. It's not make or break. Even if they had never announced it reopening this year, I would still would be doing this trip. Um, so I'm not... I mean, it is disappointing that it's one thing I won't get to ride, but it's not the end of the world for me. It's still going to be a fantastic trip. And from what it sounds like, they are working hard to try to reopen it. So um, the marketing manager, Tony, said he doesn't anticipate it being closed the entire summer season. So if your daughters are able to hold out until they reopen it, hopefully, then maybe they'll still get a chance. And who knows, maybe it'll happen sooner than later. Lizette Crafts and Tells says, gorgeous, thank you. And Locked In Diamond Painting says, another beautiful painting, cannot wait to watch you do it. I'm, I'm really excited for it too. Um, just um, Shells says, I love Klimt. I have the rest of the year planned out, but I'll have to get this one for next year. Yeah, definitely do that. Come on, thank you for the comment. And then Tracy Cruz says, oh, I love Jaded Gem Shop, but unfortunately shipping is just too much for Canada. I really enjoy your unboxings from there. Oh, yeah, it, international shipping is, it's, it's, a, it's a thing. It's, it's a pricey thing. Come on, let's keep moving. Um, so I totally understand that. But who knows, maybe someday, maybe someday if you're, you're able to, you know, snag a deal or if there's any upcoming giveaways or anything like that that you might be able to take advantage of. You never know. Thank you for the comment. All right, going back to my finish and review of Gizmonda, Miller Time Mama says, looks amazing, thank you. And going way back to my entire diamond painting stash 2.0, Sagittarius 6 says, wow, great video. I'm still doing $10 kits from Amazon. Square drills scare me. Don't let them scare you. They're not, they're not that bad. They're not as bad as, um, as it may seem. It really is pretty similar to round drill. It just takes maybe a little bit more of a learning curve, but not much, not much. Let's keep going. All right, and then we've got uh, responses to my vlog, episode 109. Live in Cup says, I love the view of the mountains. We, whoops, we went to visit my family in Colorado Springs and, and was enamored by the breathtaking views everywhere we went. I agree with the DAC tips. I don't think I could go back to another type. Yeah, they're, they're pretty awesome. I just, I just don't see myself, come here, um, switching it up anytime soon. I, and I honestly don't know how they would improve upon their, their, um, their tips. They're just really great. Really, really great. So totally agree with you there. And thanks for watching. Make sure I like and heart. Alley Cat says, hot glue might be a better option to attach the command strips to your canvas. I have used hot glue when attaching magnetic frames to a canvas and the canvas withstood the heat just fine. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mentioned in my previous vlog, um, so if you haven't gotten a chance to watch that, take a look. But I got this adhesive tape like roll of adhesive gummy removable tape stuff. It's basically like a giant roll of command strip, but like stronger and it is working amazingly well. So I think I'm just going to keep working with that. Um, so yeah, but that is, that, that is good that to hear that, um, you've used hot glue for a magnetic frame. That's, that's good to know. Cause who knows, maybe I could even do magnetic frames at some point. I don't know. Michelle Callender said, love the walk and talk, especially when they are long while I work on my whip. The new scenery is beautiful. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. And Renee Luby says, um, 
Hi, since I talked to you last, I broke down and bought a Randall Spangler painting. It's a square. The literate dragon. Ooh, I like that one. I do like that one. I'm not a Randall Spangler person in general, but I do like his artwork as artwork, and I do like that one. Um, don't, uh, don't like squares, but getting used to it. Um, I just love listening to you while I diamond paint. Have a good day. Yeah, of course. Thank you for commenting. And then back to my finish and review of Gizmonda, Miller Time Mama says, absolutely stunning. Thank you. Okay, um, we're at 19% battery. We're okay for a little bit. We can get through a few more before I have to swap out. What do you smell? What do you smell, buddy? We've done, oh, I haven't even been recording this. Workout. No. That's okay. I'm sure we're probably somewhere in the two and a half mile range-ish, maybe. Um, but yeah, I would eventually like to walk up this way. I mean, I, I do walk up this way when I'm not filming, but you can already hear the highway, the traffic noise. It gets way worse if we go that way, but it does take us a more direct route back to the house, <laughs> kind of, in this in the right direction a little bit uh, faster and without less people, but it's much louder. I tried filming up there once and I ended up getting frustrated because I'm like, okay, I'm sorry about the car noise. But anyway, like I was saying, Jaded Gem Shop is one of my favorite shops to shop from. It's like, this isn't gonna work. A <laughs> um, uh, whole bunch of comments in regards to my vlog episode 109. Alley Cat says, if I have to pick a favorite, I guess I would have to say Donnie Darko. Music is great and the story is very thought provoking. Still not sure I have figured it all out, even after all the times I've watched it. I like Misery too. Your mom sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think I've seen Donnie Darko one time. I could not tell you plot, plot points and stuff. Um, I'll have to rewatch it. Um, I typically watch movies unless it's like a movie I've seen a bajillion times or a movie that has, you know, I have memories attached to it. But when I watch movies or TV shows, it's more of like a passing watch in, in the sense that it's going in my head and right out the other end as I'm watching it without, with a little bit of remembering. <laughs> but when I consume like visual content like that, unless I'm sitting down and saying, okay, this is important for me to remember or this is something I want to, uh, be able to talk about and recall it's just there in the moment like I can't I have such a hard time um, just just sitting and watching something like someone's like oh let's watch a movie while we eat dinner okay and they put it on or a tv show it's just the kind of like visual visual and audio noise for me in the moment I might be like oh is that because blah 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 or that's that but I don't retain it I don't retain it <laughs> um <laughs> Unless it's something I, um, something that really catches my eye, or like I said, I'm like, okay, I want to watch this movie because I've heard blah 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 blah, and I'd like to know or see it, and uh, know more. Um, otherwise, I just don't, um, I don't retain uh, TV or movies, unfortunately. <laughs> but I, I will. I'll put. I'm gonna put that on the list. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that. Okay. Michelle Callender says, thank you for the comment, Allie, I appreciate it. Michelle Callender says, being so far behind is because you have so many followers that enjoy your content, me included. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> thank you. And Kay Whittington says, I had to laugh about your comment on the apartment people being badly dressed. I think that about, uh, about a lot of people I see out and about. I teasingly say that I need to start a mirror charity because there seemed to be an awful a lot of people running around who need one. Surely if they had a mirror, they wouldn't go out in public looking like that. Yeah, I mean, around here, it's not too, like, it's not crazy. I think for me, it's more of like when I see some, see people near like, or see people like walking around or near their apartments or something like that, and they're just super expensive. And I just have this picture in my head of, if I was someone that could afford to live there, I would assume that my lifestyle would be you know, nicer dressed looking clothes and stuff. And it just boggles my mind that I'm like, okay, I know that apartment's like 4,000 a month and this person has like torn up 
the wafer paper, you know, tissue paper, thin sweatpants on that are like threadbare and stuff. I'm like, this just, the math isn't math, isn't working out for me. And it just boggles my mind. I'm like, if you have that much money to afford the apartment, then, then show like live it, <laughs> you know, or at least I would live it. <laughs> But maybe that's, like I said, how they're able to afford such a nice place is they're not spending a ton of money on clothes and stuff and, and, and accessories. I don't know. I don't know. Just a passing, a passing me being a Judge Judy. <laughs> Thank you for the comment. Kay goes on to say, uh, isn't washing a dog so much fun? Not anyone who does not know what shampoo tastes like has never washed a dog. Yeah, I eat a lot of shampoo and conditioner when I wash Apollo. <laughs> and then Kay also says, if you're still looking for a solution to hanging Gizmonda, I have used alien tape to hang pictures. It's really strong and may work better than the command strips. I wonder if what I got is some kind of version of alien tape. You'll have to let me know if that's a brand or not but maybe that's what I ended up getting without realizing it. You'll have to let me know. In my last vlog, I put a picture in picture of what I bought, so. Um, Michelle Morris C says, O'Brien Custom Churning is on Etsy, and yes, please do a cross-stitch conversion. Well, I'll be work, continuing work on my other cross-stitch conversion from last summer with the Masters. It's from Jaded Gem Shop. It's called, uh, I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> It's by Ernst Heckel Heikel, and it's called, dang it, I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> Mia, help me, you remember. <laughs> um, German-Austrian artist, he's actually a biologist um, that did these illustrations of different plant life and stuff, but I forget what it's called now. I feel like it's something with ferns. Oh no. Anyway, I will be working on that this year again. Um, and I will take a look at O'Brien Custom Churning on Etsy, taking a screenshot. Thank you. Okay. And then Lisa Noof says, hi, Anthony, to answer your question, my favorite movie is Secret Window by Johnny Depp. I've never seen that. Um, the ending was so unexpected and chilling. Ooh, being a writer myself. What? Lisa, are you published? You'll have to tell me. I find I'm drawn to movies that have a character as a writer. That's probably why I also love your favorite. Uh-oh. Apollo just ate something. Oh, great. Did you just eat a Whopper off the ground? A little bit of chocolate, huh? Great. Wonder how that's going to come out the other end. Come here. Someone dropped a whole box of Whoppers around here. Um, luckily, those are very low-quality milk chocolate, so I doubt the level of... Uh, cocoa in those is very high at all, but yeah. Jeez, you'd think you'd walk by mines, which is like an engineering college, and there wouldn't be candy strewn about. I could see that at a community college, but not here. <laughs> Just kidding, don't come after me if you went to a community college. Great. Uh, he, wow, I think that might be the first time he's ever eaten chocolate is a Whopper off the ground. Ay, 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 ay. Anyway, sorry. Um, so you like movies with characters that have writers in it. That's probably why I also love your favorite movie, Misery. Kathy Bates did a phenomenal job in that one. Yeah, she is fantastic. One of my favorite, she's probably the, my most memorable, memorable actresses that I've ever, um, that I have in my memory, just because she's what I, I've watched a number of her movies, and I don't really follow along with like popular actors and actresses and singers and stuff like celebrities. I'm not a celebrity person whatsoever. Um, I'm not a pop, pop culture person, just in general. Unfortunately, I'm very disconnected. I do have opinions about the ones that I do know of, strong opinions, but I, I, it's a it's a limited number. <laughs> Don't ask me how I feel about Taylor Swift because it probably won't, you probably will be upset. <laughs> um, okay, going back to my unboxing of the Tree of Life. Um, Miller Time Mama says, gorgeous, definitely adding to my wish list now. Oh, good. Thank you for checking out that video. 
Then my vlog episode 109, Diamond Painting RN says, I love Apollo's name. I have always been fascinated by Greek mythology. I believe Hera is the goddess of marriages. Isis is also a beautiful name. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I love both of those names. Um, I don't know a lot of the backstory, and in fact, I probably get some of the backstory wrong. It's just the sound of it I really like. And I think having like those, those names, some of those shorter names just make for good pet names because you can yell it faster. <laughs> Um, all right, and then Mia over at Mia's Life with KFS says, I'm trying really hard to find a favorite movie, but I don't think I can choose. Maybe let's say that I love movies with Donnie and Mark Wahlberg. Of course you do. <laughs> when it comes to TV series, I love everything Star Trek and Blue Bloods. Hang on, mister. Uh, uh, are you saying that you don't keep up with my content? I am so disappointed right now. I do. I do. I do keep up with content. I just feel like I do keep up with some content, but in yours especially, I try to keep up with. But I've been on such a skincare um, content kick recently. Um, oh, we've got, a, we've got a gaggle of dogs behind us. Let's go ahead and cross the street, Apollo. Let's go this way. Yeah, I, I need to catch up. I, I am, I, you know what, I am behind on your content. I'll just be completely honest. Um, but of my list of diamond painters that I do, oh, seriously, oh my gosh. Hold on, Let, hold on everyone. Sorry. I had the, I had a, uh, I had a creep walker behind me. <laughs> Not that he's a creep, but remember earlier in the previous vlog, I was like, I feel like it, sometimes people just kind of meander and they just follow where you're going, even if that's not necessarily where they're going, just out of curiosity. It's like Children of the Corn or uh, what is it? What is that movie where everyone in town is like been abducted, like they're being their body, but, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah, sometimes I get body snatcher vibes around here. It's like, sir, I'm gonna go ahead and just go a different way completely make it really awkward for you if you decide to turn around again. Okay. Um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Hop up. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, come on. And down. Good boy. Um, I, I do not keep up with diamond painting content. I have transitioned when I'm watching YouTube videos, I'm watching a lot of skincare. I'm watching a lot of histor um, historical art documentaries right now. And I am watching a lot of um, short essay forms on random topics. For instance, uh, let's see if we have time to talk about this. 1% battery. No, we don't. Hold on. Sorry, everyone. Battery was at 1% and then I was struggling to get the... Uh, the mic to connect for some reason. Are you ready for these stairs, boy? Okay, go, 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 go. Oh, sorry, everyone. Whew. Got some more. One more round. Okay. Oh my goodness. Um, another type of content, like I said, like the kind of short form, some of them are long form essays just about random subjects that I'm interested in. I guess this isn't random, but uh, there's a content creator out there and her name is Jenny Nicholson. Uh, Nicholson is N-I-C-H-O-L-S-O-N. And she does short form and long form, just spoken essays about different things that she's interested in. And she's interested in a lot of theme park stuff. And so, um, I found her when I was, when I got into watching more theme park videos a couple years ago, and she had a really long essay on Evermore, which was a fantasy kind of LARP themed experience park in Utah, and just kind of the craziness about that place, and she did like a three hour um, video about the whole park and its business and her experience there. 
She has a ton of videos like that talking about Star Wars and different things, but she, she recently released a four hour um, video essay about the Star Wars, what is it called? The Galactic Star Cruise, which was that like weird boutique hotel slash themed immersive whatever that Disney did. Um, and they closed it down late last year. She went and did like this long essay, just four hours of just going into every minute detail about the whole park and, or the whole hotel and her experience and just how nonsensical it all was. Um, and so that kind of stuff I've been watching a lot of too. So that's kind of where my interest has li uh, been lying, I'd say over the past like month but I will get back into watching my favorite content creators. Anyway, all of that is to say, Mia, when I do get back to consuming more diamond painting content, um, rather than just creating it, you, you are uh, like number one on the list. So I do need to catch up with you because I do see your videos pop up and I get notified and I see the title of it and I'm like, oh, I need to watch that. And then I'm like, oh, but another four hour deep dive into uh, universal. <laughs> and then I just go down that rabbit hole all night. Then I go to bed. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I love you. <laughs> Don't hate me. Um, let's see. La -da -da. Here we go. Okay. Um, She said, I am so disappointed <laughs> right now. You have to do better. <laughs> and then a bunch of laughing emojis. I know you're just, you're just giving me a hard time. I know I'm not taking this personally, but I am a little bit. <laughs> I do want to keep up with you. <laughs> um, yes, my sense of humor is dark, weird, and very sarcastic. I think I was maybe eight when I saw it the first time and I absolutely loved it. Things uh, were just different back in the 80s and 90s. Give Apollo a nose boop and lots of hugs to both of you. P.S. What happened to you joining my live May 19th? You bailed on me. I, I know. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. So um, did you message me with details or anything? Because I feel like if uh, I'm not putting the putting this on you, but any time, let's just say this. If that ever happens again, when we're like, oh, we'll do this thing, please remind me because life gets busy and just don't feel like you shouldn't or you're like, oh, I don't want to bother him. Never feel that way. Um, I, will, I, will, I will fulfill my obligations, but sometimes I do need a reminder and a nudge. Um, not all the time, not all the time, but when it's stuff like, like diamond painting stuff, I should have just put it on my calendar. Um, I, it completely slipped my mind. I'll be completely honest. I totally forgot. Um, but don't feel like you shouldn't or like, Ooh, I don't know if I should just write me on Instagram and be like, Anthony, you said you were going to do this thing coming up. Don't do not forget exclamation point all caps because that will help me. I, I am a planner and I do try to plan things, but when it's something like, for instance, hey, do you want to go live with me in a month or a few weeks? Sure. When do you want to do it? Um, I could do, sun, you know, Sunday, May 19th, since you go Sunday. Okay, cool. And that's the end of the conversation. That's a tough, that it's hard for me to, to abs let that absorb. And like, there, I, I don't set a lot of permanence sometimes around those quick conversations like that. Um, it either needs to be something that I've been like, planning out for a long time and there's minutia around it. Um, it's just how my brain kind of works, you know, like I'll remember to do something if it's like, all right, I've been, I've been gearing up for this thing for weeks or for months or for a year or whatever. But sometimes those like, Hey, should we do this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. And those are the, like, I need some, some, some more, some more, uh, push around that, if that makes sense. I'm so sorry, now I feel like a real jerk because you really, you really hit me with a one-two punch of you're not keeping up with my content and you missed when we were supposed to go live together. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I always feel extra bad where I'm, I feel like I'm not fulfilling obligations or I'm a bad friend because I'm not doing those things. Meanwhile, I'm out here like, let's go on a two hour vlog. It's like, yeah, you can do that, but you can't, <laughs> 
you can't join me on my live. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, uh, finishing review of Gizmonda. TX Laura said, amazing work. I don't know how you completed that in just over a month. Did you forgo sleep? No, I, I see this is one of those things I'm like, I know this is not someone asking me like, what do you not sleep or drink or do work or anything? You're just a diamond painting robot. Like that's how it hits me. I'm sorry. I know that's not how you mean it, but yeah, I did sleep. I, you know, uh, as a human, I have to. So yes, I did. <laughs> Thank you for the comment. Um, <laughs> Um, the Sin, uh, the Crafty Witch UK said, I love Mooka and it's so nice to see his work produced in a good size to be truly appreciated. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. And I, I've learned to, I mean, I've always liked his work since I started diamond painting. That's how I discovered Mooka because I never used to be a, a person interested in old, old masters artwork or really artwork in general. Diamond painting really, um, set that off for me as an interest. Um, but especially Muka, I just ended up really liking him just as what I saw, but I never knew like the story or, you know, I didn't hold as much appreciation. And now it's, he's quickly becoming one of my favorite old masters artists for not only because I love the artwork itself, but just his life and the directions that he, like he pivoted into and out of. And it's just really interesting. Um, so yeah, thank you. Going back to uh, to that whole like, wow, that only took you blah, blah, blah. I wonder if I should start just for my own sanity. Um, if I should, uh, oh, no, 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 come on. Come on, Whopper boy, let's go. I wonder if I should stop even mentioning a start and end date. Because I do talk about, like I talk about when I start projects in vlogs, like, oh, like I just picked up muted sound. But I, I think by the time I've been talking about it for a number of vlogs, um, it would be hard for people to like put a pin in like, he started on this date and I'm tracking how long it's taking him. Like it all just becomes muddled. Like he's just, I'm just working on projects and then I'm done with one of them. But when I'm mentioning them in vlogs, I it's probably there's not like those it's harder to track or I, I wouldn't assume people are tracking on a spreadsheet when I've mentioned new projects or not um, so maybe if I don't out and out say in a finished review it's just I say it because it's common a uh, place for people to say I started it on this date and I finished it on this date but maybe for the sake of me not my feathers not getting ruffled about timelines um maybe i'll just skip saying a start and end date i'll just say this is my sixth finish of the year and my 41st or whatever finish overall and not not mention how long it took me that way I, that way it, it's not something i have to i don't have to field those questions be them a well-intentioned or not <laughs> Um, I don't have to worry about someone being like, wow, I could, you know, I could never do that because I, I've seen this, this, maybe this is one of the ones that sticks in my craw is, wow, I, I have kids in a full-time job. I could never get something done that fast. And it's like, I'm not at, I didn't ask you to, I didn't ask you to finish one that fast. So don't like go at your own pace. It isn't a, it isn't a competition. <laughs> don't worry about it. You don't need to know how long I spent on it or how many hours a day I worked on it. Like it's really, you know, if I stayed up super late on the last few nights to finish it, that's my prerogative. You know, I don't know. I don't know why that gets under my skin. Cause there are, I think it probably is. Cause there are days where I'm like, wow, I diamond painted like eight hours today. I should probably do something else with my Saturday, you know? And it just, those comments, build this like in me build this feeling of like you should it there's shame around diamond painting too much or more than somebody else or you have the you have the flexibility with your schedule to do more than somebody else does therefore 
um, you should feel bad about that or guilty about it or, I don't know, I don't know. There's something about it that even if, I don't know, I just, I think I'm reading too much into it probably. But anyway, sorry. Maybe I will no longer talk about how long it took me to get stuff done. I'll just say, I got it done. <laughs> Doesn't it look good? Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, going way back to when I used to title my unboxings, let's take a look in all caps. Wow, this is, this is back in the day. Um, unboxing distracted by diamonds, Zodiac. Um, Junie Birch said, have you started this one yet? No, I de-stashed that one uh, about a year ago, I think. <laughs> so no, I didn't start that one. Um, but I do plan on purchasing that, that uh, piece of artwork again, Zodiac from Alphonse Mucha. I'll be purchasing that again, most likely from Jaded Gem Shop because that's the uncropped version and I'm gonna, I'll probably get it in round drill. So you may see it pop back up in a different, different way and on my shop or on my channel soon. Not soon, don't, nope, not soon. And a long time from now, <laughs> you'll see that pop up on my channel in 2026. <laughs> I, I need to stop getting get, get out of the mindset of saying oh it's coming soon I can't wait to work on this soon I'll maybe I'll unbox it soon it's like no you won't don't lie it's you, there's no way <laughs> all right ready and up good boy good boy come over here and down the boo you're about to see our our obstacle course when we do our non-vlogging walks and down Go, go, go. And up. Okay, and down. And down. And up. Good boy, and down. Go, go, go. Okay, up. Woo! And down. Go on, go on, up. And down. One more. One more, last one. And up. Okay, and last one, and down. Yeah! Nice. Nice, buddy. Woo, yeah. Good boy. Sweet, you're like Rocky. Oh, that got me a little bit. <sighs> okay. All right. Going to my vlog, episode 109. Um, Tracy Cruz says, OMG, when you said Noxzema, I immediately started smelling it. Oh, yeah, that alcohol scent. Ugh. Very astringent. Very astringent. Let's see if we can just go. I think we can. We're on the main drag here, so we're going to get a lot of car noise. My apologies. But this is kind of our normal way home when I'm not vlogging. <sighs> okay, we've done one and a half miles since I hit the button, so we're probably close to like four and a half. Four and a quarter, four and a half at this point. All right, uh, vlog episode 107, walking around Bear Creek. Loba Crafts says, truly, I think you just needed a break. It's okay to not film. Sometimes it's better to have face-to-face -face engagement and then come back to have something to talk with, uh, talk about with us. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I think that it's just kind of finding that flow and that balance and I'll continue to adjust. And it also, it's the, a flow for the moment, you know? I'll find a good flow and then I need to be more introverted for a little bit because work's impacting that. So there's, I don't think there's any set formula, for me at least. Um, there's no set formula. Um, and if I did try to put a set formula around it, I think that's what would probably lead me to burnout or feeling like I'm being monotonous in the content that I'm putting up or not feeling, you know what I mean? So I think it just, it just depends. It really just depends on the week and month, all that stuff. And situation. Um, but if I am feeling it, I'm gonna try to take advantage of that and, and record, so yeah. Um, all right, moving on to my unboxing of Chasm of the Colorado from Thomas Moran and Jada Gem Shop. Michelle Callender says, love how it looks like, sh uh, I love, 
Love how it looks like light shining through the clouds. Yeah, exactly. That's one of the reasons why I loved it. And I was worried about how that might uh, render out because that can be kind of difficult to render. But Jade did a fantastic job and her rendering software that she uses and her manufacturer uses seems to be pretty top notch. So, yeah. All right, going to my event announcement for Summer with the Masters. Uh, Raven, I think I got that. Raven X says, hello everyone. I came from Diamonds and Washi channel and just discovered the Summer with the Masters event for this year. I'm so excited and hoping to participate in this event. I've started diamond painting in April and have been thinking about working on some art of older classics. So I think this event would be a good um, start to kick me into it. I have a few smaller pieces that I've picked up from craft stores in my area, but now maybe looking for bigger pieces. I just love those art, the artwork that you showcase in this video. That Renaissance art is amazing. Yeah, it is. It's so awesome. And oh yeah, welcome to the world of diamond painting and welcome to your new obsession. <laughs> and thank you so much for checking out my channel. Um, if you end up watching the vlogs, um, yeah. Yeah, that your path was very similar to mine uh, two years ago now, where I started purchasing kits. Um, I started in, I think, February of 2022. And um, started just kind of purchasing kits here and there without necessarily a specific direction. It was just like whatever caught my eye. And then I found out about the Summer with the Masters event by watching Katie's channel and uh, purchased Soul of the Rose by, is that John William Waterhouse? I think, did I say that wrong? I don't know. <laughs> by that artist that does that one uh, artwork. And, um, and I fell in love with not only that piece, but just the genre in general. And now that's like the majority of what I like to work on and purchase. I have plenty of modern artists, digital artists in my stash. I'd say I probably have more of those than I do of old masters, but the it's starting to level out where I have equal number of old masters versus more modern artwork or digital artwork. So, and I think that will continue to sway in the direction of old masters, Renaissance artwork, as time goes by. Um, so yeah, welcome. And I hope you get to participate. You have to let us know what you end up selecting if you do decide to. All right, going to my unboxing of Chasm of the Colorado. Lisa says, ooh, that looks so nice. Looking forward to seeing you work on it. And it's finished. One day, can you, one day, can you please make a video of your process kitting up a jaded gem shop? I just kitted up my first from Jade for Summer with the Masters. I have three more and it took me so long, almost four hours. Wow, it has 72 colors. There has to be a better way than what I did. I kept having to go back and change containers because I would find another bag of a color I already did. I'd love to see your process. Aha, yes. Lisa, I can help you out without doing a video. Um, that is one of the uh, struggles and kind of pains with jaded gem shops. A manufacturer is a lot of their DMC um, DMC colors are pre-bagged so it'll, they'll have like a 200 bag a 400 bag a 600 bag a thousand bag a 50 bag because it just makes it easier than custom filling the bags whereas a shop like Diamond Art Club who has a dedicated manufacturer that's producing their kits when they do a run of kits they just do, they just turn the machine uh, on and set it to the, to those bag fills and they're process, they're making a thousand of those kits, you know, 2000 of those kits, whatever at one time. Whereas Jade, her kits are made to order. So her manufacturer, if I had to guess, is not exclusively uh, making Jade's drills and Jade doesn't mass, uh, mass make her kits in big batches so they can't just set the machine to all right we're gonna do a thousand gizmon does today you know um so they have a lot of that stuff pre-bagged and uh someone from the shop just goes around on all the shelves and pulls down and with scissors and says okay i need two of these and one of these and four of these and six of these so they're all pre-done in specific sizes so when you get a jaded gem shop kit you'll 
have a bunch of three tens that are all together because someone just pulled a pulled a strand of, you know, I need 4,000 of these, 500, 500, let's just take all these. And then they needed an extra 50. So you'll have a random bag of 50 or 100 drills floating around of that same color. So what I do is before I start kitting up a Jaded Gem Shop kit, I organize all of my drills by uh, DMC before I even start. That way I know that I've got all of them together and I'm not surprised by a random small bag of something later on. Um, I organize them by the hundreds uh, at first, so in just piles of hundreds. So all my 300s, so 310, 317, 318, whatever, those are in a pile, 400, 5, 6, 7, and so on and so forth. Then when you get to the 3000s, 3000, you know, 57, 89, whatever, those are together. Then 3,100, 3,200, 33, all the way up until, you know, 5,200. So in the, in the hundreds, they're all in piles. And then I have my legend next to me and I grab my first color, which is like one, 137, grab a container and I grab my 100s and then I organize them by the actual DMC, so 107, 108, 109. Um, so I grab my 100 pile, sort those 100s, work on all of those, and then move to the next one. Now I'm doing 301, 317, 338, whatever they are. Um, then I'm doing the next one, four, 400, 409, you know, 600, you know, 666, 689, whatever. And that's how I do it, so I'm not, I'm not missing those little straggler bags. So I totally feel you. That would be so frustrating if you had just kitted up a big old strand of them and then found one floating. Um, start, prep yourself for success by organizing first in the hundreds in piles and then as you move through each round of the hundreds, break them down by the actual DMC and, um, and, and then you should be good. And just double check your pile of the hundreds to make sure you didn't miss one, you know, that type of thing. That, that'll be a huge time saver because then you're not having to scoot containers around and stuff. Um, so yeah, I totally see you there. I totally get you. Um, but that's how I do it. Um, the other thing I do, because at least for me, um, some of Jade's kits tend to be pretty static heavy, which happens with most shops that I, <laughs> that I purchase from. So if you're running into excessive static, I will um, take a my like a staticky bag of drills, and I have a drill tray with me. And rather than trying to put them in a funnel or put them right into the container, um, I'll do that until I have like you know the walls of the bag are all covered in static drills. I'll cut the bag fully open and kind of try to shake those out onto a tray. And I just do that until, you know, let's say it's 310. I've got a tray full of static E310s. I lay a dryer sheet inside the tray with all those static E drills, a big old dryer sheet as big as you can fit in the tray. I put the lid, the stopper in the lid on my tray, give it, hold it nicely <laughs> so you're not spraying them everywhere. And I shake the whole tray with the dryer sheet and the drills in it. I'm just shake, 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 and na, 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 na. And then usually that removes a lot of the static. I pop the lid off um, and then, um, oh no, no, yeah, I pop the lid off, take the stopper out. Sometimes I have to put the lid back on and then I tap those into the funnel or into the, into the container. That's how I alleviate static when I'm kidding up. Um, what else do I do? Um, I have, I always, when I'm kidding up, I always have random drills that go flying off across the table or into space and I don't find them till later on. And I'm like, oh, dang it, there's a random drill. So I always have a container in my set that I put a sticker on and I just write the letter R on it. And R stands for random. <laughs> and so as I have random drills that I either find on my lap or on the floor or on the table after I kit up or even while I'm diamond painting, they all just go in the random container. That way, if I end up running short of a color, I can go to my random container and 
just do my best to color match. It might not be the exact DMC, but if it's a shade of tan or a dark blue or something, I at least have those from that kit sitting around if I need them. And I find that I do typically have quite a few of those after I'm done kitting up a Jaded Gem Shop kit. Not like a whole container's worth, but let's say 20 or 30 that just kind of lost their way. And so I just keep them on hand. I've never had to utilize my random <laughs> container, but I like to keep them on hand just in case I do run into an issue. So I always have an R container and then I have a T container and T is trash. So all my trash drills as I'm working up a kit go on there so I can show everyone when I'm done with the kit how much trash I had if I remember to do that <laughs> in a finish and review. I forgot to do it for summer, I think, but I always take a picture of my trash container before I kit down. So um, that'll be the last question because we're back at the house and my throat is burning. Um, I'm gonna go drink some tea, take a shower, do my skincare routine, feed Apollo, hang out with my roommates. It looks like Joe's gone, but um, say hi to Doug, fill up my water container. Uh, maybe I'll go get a kombucha, who knows? And I'm gonna go sit down and diamond paint my little butt off while I listen to Alphonse Mucha documentaries and make copious notes. <laughs> oh, that's my life, so. Well, thank you so much. I hope, um, I hope Lisa, that that helped out, uh, that helped you out. So yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this content with friends, family members, anyone that you think might take some value out of it. Otherwise, oh, we are now at, oops. Um, we are now at six days behind. Can you believe that? Yeah, I should be able to get through the rest of them in our next vlog, in addition to whatever else comes in, if anything, so. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this content with friends, family members, anyone that you think might take some value out of this content. Otherwise, happy placing. Thanks so much as always for watching. I really do appreciate you being here and we'll see you next time. Bye, 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 bye. Bye.